all right so episode two we're gonna tackle about um combat mechanics and attackers and defenders uh you might hear some background noises because i'm on a discord call who's currently afk but uh let's get right into it uh in basically the intro i'm going to tackle um sorry it's on notepad uh shooting recoil control peeking quick peeking attacking windows upside down repel utilities map knowledge and then going vertical but that's uh that's another part in attack um because yeah so in attack uh there's droning and destroying default cams there's roll rules soft breaching and making angles hard breaching planting in smokes uh basically how to plant uh default plants defending post plant vertical defense reinforcement utilities countering the hard breach pre-place traps and roaming and setups um yeah uh, if there is anything i didn't mention just watch through the video anyway let's get right to it so attackers you have your support role like thatcher is the one of the most important in hard breaching and then Thermite, the original hard breacher, is how I like to call him. Uh, he's a hard breacher, complemented by Thatcher. And then you have your Fragger rolls. Um, Ash is like a soft breacher, which the with the breaching round. Sledge is good for vertical going down. Remember in the previous video, I said Sledge is good for top to bottom. And buck is good for bottom to top, but you can also use buck for like top to bottom. Uh, you have uh, shield ops, mountain, blitz, and fuse. Um, they are usually the planters, but for fuse, I rather use his AK-12 and use his cluster charge. For blitz and uh, mountain, uh, mountain is a better option for me because I enter with him, give. Uh, call outs while holding diffuser and being safe with the with the diffuser anyway uh, iq detects enemy electronics uh as i mentioned in defense we're going to talk about pre-place traps that could be pre-place c4s or goo mines or whatever uh even maestro cams can be hidden in well-placed area or more or more Importantly, echo cams during a three second plant situation. Uh, yeah, so you have another support which is like Finca, Capitao. So, Finca, a general surge, gives you temporary boost of HP. We covered that last video. Capitao is a support because he can use smokes, but he can also be a fragger as he can use the fire, uh, the fire bolt. Hello, I'm doing a video. Hello. So, okay. So we have Nomad, which is a um, counter flanker, counter roamer. Basically, seals off area. We've seen that in the previous video. Uh, you have Knock, which is a counter roamer, or what I. It, in CSGO, it'd be called a lurker. Uh, yeah, so basically, those are the basic roles. We have Hard Breachers like Hibana, Thermite, Ace, and Maverick. And we have uh, soft breachers like uh, Ash, Sledge, Buck, and everyone else with a breaching charge at this point. And then the rest are like entries or refraggers or Dokabi is a support, also counter roamer, because you can detect uh, roamers or you know the call. But remember, it can get uh, countered by a mute. Sniper ops aren't really that important, but if you're good in glass, like the way I, sh uh, the way I use glass, is I smoke myself and look through angles while prone. You know. Anyway, going over for defense, uh, we have your counter hard breachers. So we have mute and you have bandit. Any and anyway, you can use like um, Kate is also a counter. Also Mira, if you know how. If someone's p putting a thermite. And then you put your mirror wall, it can actually destroy it. Uh, anyway, you have to be creative in defense. Uh, you have your roamers. Uh, Vigil is the most stereotypical roamer out there because he can be invisible. 
to drones, and that's one of the most important ones. Cav was the original roamer. He has silent step, can lurk on her prey. Uh, yeah, and echo drones for info like Valk and trap ops like Frost. The original trap op was Frost, and then Legion came along, and then Elder's Mines, and then now Melusi's Banshees, you know. Uh, Warden is a special kind. Uh, he can counter the smoke plant, which will be, you know, going over there later. Uh, Mozzie, uh, I use him as a roamer, but his drones, I use him as Valkams and I keep one to myself so I can roam with it. Uh, yeah, so Capcan. Capcan was also the original trap op because his, a uh, his EDDs are one hit kill until they nerfed it. And then you have your ACOG users, we're spawn peekers, Doc, Rook, and Echo, and I believe Cade's um, shotgun still has ACOG, which I always use. Uh, yeah. So that's basically it. Well, you have your counter planters, which is like pulse, so you can like see through, like if you're going vertical, throw C4 on the ceiling when someone's planting. Or you can use smoke. When they smoke, you can smoke the smoke using smoke smokes. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, yeah. And Echo, one of the most annoying, um, like pre-plant situation. You have three seconds. You're planting. It's the clock zero zero. You're about to finish your plant, and then boom, you get echoed, and then you lose the round. Maestro also. Maestro cams can see through smoke, uh, and can laser you. Ouch. Ouch. Sorry about that. Ouch. Alright. Okay. Did you stream me? Yeah, I'm recording. Wait, what? Yes, I'm recording. Alright. Oh. So. It's fine. It's gonna, I'm not gonna edit that out. Anyway, Goyo. Goyo is annoying. Counter entry. So his shields. If you vault over them and if they get shot, they catch on fire, you basically die. Same with Legion, you can't plant while having a goo mine on stuck on you. And you can't sprint also. Um, yeah, Mira is one of the most important anchors in any sites that uh, where Mira is viable. But you know, you can always be creative. Uh, we'll cover roaming later. Anyway. Uh, that's about it. Uh, let's head on to the combat mechanics. Do you know so we're on a T hunt, and T hunts are a really useful tool on practicing your combat Loading mechanics. Uh, combat mechanics such as shooting, peeking, uh, all that stuff. Um, so how do I use uh, T hunts? Well, when I was starting out, I would like learn the recoil pattern. So as you can see, I'm using Zofia uh, with a angled foregrip and echo. So as you can see there, it's just vertical, slight left, slight right, slight left, slight right, slight left, and you get there. And it maxes out to the uh, maximus, uh, maximus, maximal height. Uh, basically, there's no more vertical recoil. So how do you use uh, this information? So you know that it's vertical, basically vertical. So you have to draw an opposite um, line drawing it. So instead of going, um, so you see this is straight up and then left, you're going to pull your mouse down and then right. So uh, it's, it's going to look like this. As you can see, um, there were left and rights, but I basically made a grouping here. Uh, I'm doing it in 10 meters. You see, that's uh, better grouping compared to the first one. Uh, yeah, it takes a little practice. Uh, my brain needs needs to like remember Zofia's recoil pattern, but that's basically how you learn a recoil pattern. Uh, it's by uh, studying the recoil patterns like this. So let's talk about peeking next. So peeking, uh, generally the rule of thumb is the cover should be opposite of where you're peeking. So the cover here is on the left. I'm peeking on the right. Uh, if we change that, my my cover is on the right. I'm peeking on the left. 
Uh, generally, you want your your body to be covered, and you want you yourself to look small. Um, there's something called a quick peek. So basically, this is how you quick peek. Um, I'll show you first how it looks like. So there's Ash right there. So this is like the basic quick peek. Uh, it's just basically, yeah, like that. A Q D Q. So A Q D Q. Yeah. So again, A Q D Q. But the more advanced quick peek, which is um, for more advanced players, is like this. It's much faster. So that's going to be. Ignore the F. A Q D E. So. Yeah. So you press A Q and then D E. A Q, D E. A Q and D E. So let's put that to the test. Ash, can you stay there um, while I find uh, enemies? So why do I have to quick peek? You don't quick peek for kills, you quick peek for information, just like what I did there. So again. You can do the basic quick peek or the advanced quick peek. I call it advanced and basic because having to press three buttons is easier than than pressing uh, four buttons. But you know, so this is the basic. So you see, I'm just slicing the pie. It's similar to to CS:GO's jitter peek. So that's another kind of peek. So it's like this: you're slicing the pie. But in R6, the more common one is that, like that. I saw one. Sorry, it's not the F. I keep. Yeah, so basically, you get the idea of quick peeking. I keep pressing F, I'm sorry. It's been a while. So, yeah. So, for example, I'm clearing out this room. I have no more drones. I do that. And if they start shooting, I know where they are. I can just like prone and shoot, or I can, uh, I can play smart. Depends, you have to be creative. And like for example, if you hear something and you want to peek it, just you know. Uh, yeah. So, um, there's other ways of peeking in this game. Uh, one. Okay. So, for example, I'm a defender, and this door is open, and I I, I want to hold that door, but I don't want people to know. So during the prep phase. What I would do is, I'd shoot this. They can barely see, so this is a bullet hole peak. Bullet hole peak is like the more advanced version of a, of a uh, melee peak. So look, you can barely see that. If you're entering, you're not gonna be able to notice the difference. But if you melee hole, melee hole like this, I just gotta make sure there's a, there you're going to be able to see it so let's pretend I just spawned you see how big that is compared to the bullet hole if I just spawn I'm, I'm quick peeking out I'll, I'll refire that but if it's like one bullet hole uh, again you're not gonna be able to notice it especially in random weird places so it's like this for example so it's like that made by my pistol but I can see it with my ACOG you see so yeah, uh, the last um, the last peak that I am going to mention is the pixel peak, which is not necessarily hard. Like for example, this this is a pixel peak, as you can see, like here. As again, my cover is on my left, so I'm leaving right. Three enemies remaining. Pixel peak sh is like the very very there, like that. It's either for info or for kills. So if you have, so if you have like this, for example, oh, he uh, yeah. So basically, you're using um, certain walls that you can only see certain parts of them. Uh, I could have gotten the kill. It's just the locker bugged out. Anyway, that's basically a pixel thing. So let's talk about. Um, T hunt real quick. So if you go to your options and then you go to general, then matchmaking preferences. You go to uh, if you want to practice your your attackers, go to elimination. If you want to practice your defenders, go to protect hostage. Uh, you can turn one off. So for example, one attackers only. I generally put in elimination. 
uh, maps, I usually put them on rank maps, so whatever rank maps we have now. So let's head on to one. Um, T hunts is basically where you practice your mechanical skills. You're aiming, you're peeking, you're shooting, all that stuff. Uh, so I already went through peeking uh, and recoil control. Now I'm gonna talk to you about practicing in uh, T hunts. So basically, there's like a few things you have to learn here aside from the recoil control. It's pre-aiming, pre-firing, and map knowledge. So I already showed you how. Uh, I'll show you later in the section where how to know map knowledge. Just basically, looking beside your compass on the right will show you uh, where uh, where things are. So where where what location you are. Okay. So let's talk about pre-aiming, pre-firing. So there's three stances. Uh, the stances are head, crouch, and then prone. So for example, this guy coming up. I was expecting him to be lower because I thought he'd be like right here. But yeah. Generally in this game, one hit headshot and also melee is a one hit. Uh, so let's start over here since it's already open. So I uh, places like this, uh, I, I didn't, I uh, already covered peeking, so try to, you know, this is how I use T-Hunt. I practice my quick peeks, my mechanical skills, my jitter peeks, for example this, my pixel peek, that's one pixel peek. Uh, I can practice my bullet hole peeks too. Uh, as you can see here, when I cut the pie, when I slice the pie, I was aiming crouch height. Why? Because these are um, places where people you should be holding. Like for example, this is the stairs. I would rather aim head height. So as you can see there, my muscle memory is already telling me to aim head height. So crouch height when someone's camping or in places where you think camping. Pre-aiming is like this. So pretend I know there's some guy there. Oh, I believe some guy is there. So I'm already pre-aiming it. Some guy is there. And I'm already pre-aiming it. I don't have to clear all the corners. Let's say I drone them out or something. That's already pre-aiming. So pre-firing is like, I have no idea, like, let's pretend, I, I, I don't know, some guy's there, so I'm just gonna pre-fire. Yeah, so, basically pre-firing. Uh, I'll try, I'll try pre-firing here. Nope. So yeah, those are basically pre-firing. So, this is where you practice your aim, your... Um, recoil control, your peekings, you know, and your other things like your abilities and stuff. So you maximize um, T hunt as a tool. So again, I don't know if someone's there. I can quick peek, but if I can pre fire, so yeah, pre fire. So I'm I'm gonna guess some guys on the right. I'm gonna pre aim and then pre fire, and I was right. So yeah, so that's basically how shooting works. Again, it, it's um, Rainbow Six Siege is all about pre-firing, and who has the better headshot. So I should have pre-fired that. And you can like practice your wall band if you think someone's there. You know, just practice your T hunts, your mechanical skills. Yeah, that was a pre-fire. Uh, that was a big fire too. You know, you, you get to practice your sound cues and all that. Oh, what? I okay, flew and caught, this, caught the bullet. So yeah, basically that's how I use T hunts. And basically the basics of shooting and pre-firing, pre-aiming. Aiming head height, crouch height, and... Sorry, standing height, crouch height, and prone height. Always the head. Garrett. So now let's talk about the combat mechanics of uh, rappelling and uh, window play. So basically, this is not where I usually do window play. I would usually do window play in uh, in border, in consulate, in bank, you know. But here in canal, I do something special. So assuming that's uh, breached already. Alright, so going to window play and uh, rappelling. 
So basically repelling, uh, I like to do something like this. Uh, let's say it's breached, and then, oh, wow. Okay, let me just destroy the barricade. Oh, wow. Okay, so you see here, the only thing they can see is my head, but it's so small that they won't be able to hit it. Uh, in a like if I keep moving like this, they'll just be lucky, you know. Also, that I'm leaning, spam leaning, they won't be able to hit it. Uh, so yeah, uh, this is basically repelling, we're not into window play yet. So one other smart thing to do is when you change your stance and if you're upside down you can peek like this at um, yes your head is seen first but it's not as not going to be as noticeable uh, for window play I guess I'll go down here again this is not the usual map I'm just showing you like what you can cannot do in windows uh, so let's talk about like the field of view so I can't aim directly behind me so here's a tip when you're going up change stance right away so in case someone runs out you'd be able to like shoot them if they're going to be right below you uh, like for example or, or try to be as fast and try to find those common runout spots so one of the common runout spots is through that door so for example I'm uh, at this stance and then as I'm going up, I change stance, yeah. So here in Windows, you can like jitter peek like that, like that. Uh, so it increase your chances of not getting hit, you know. Or you can create angles, like for example here, if I shoot you like that. Oof. Uh, that was way off, but basically my point is I can make angles. Uh, there so someone's holding that uh, but again this is not a place where I would be doing window play uh, usually uh, so again utility use um, stun if you can I can't believe that affected me but okay so yeah uh, that's the basics of repelling but we'll go in depth again when we reach consulate or back Okay, so let's talk about uh, window play next. So I'm Nomad, but I'm usually a Blackbeard here who does window play. So uh, I want my Nomad spots uh, to be... I'll show you my Nomad spots. So one there, because it encompasses yellow window and um, yellow door or yellow exit door. Uh, here I'll put it in between uh, piano window, both of them, left or right. And then I'll put one here. So basically, there's all three of nomads uh, by here. So why? All right. So let's say no, not yet, not yet, not yet. So let's say I'm uh, going to do a window play. So again, pretend I'm like Blackbeard. Uh, so here's where uh, CEO is where the site is. And then say I'm contesting someone here so for example someone runs out at the uh, uh, yellow door so please run out yellow door pretend that like I'm shooting I'm shooting like for example here he gets air jab okay now I want you to go to piano you see uh, I can react to that so while I'm shooting and then I hear it I'm going to flick or yeah so jump out piano so again I could be able to shoot him now go to garage and for example I'm doing a vertical play here go to garage then blow the leftmost wall in front of white van and then go straight and try to peek and there you can see the air jam Alright, so that's basically the vertical place of, uh, of, sorry, the nomad spots in consulate if I'm trying to hit CEO window. Uh, yeah. So, 
that's basically it for window play, I guess. Um, I, I guess I'll have to show the runouts and the spawn peaks again. So there's a uh, runout, and as you saw, the runout there was from Garage. If it wasn't nomaded, I would have been dead. Again, it's the sound cue that's important, not necessarily the kill. And again, it's also a deterrent for someone who would be who would be passing by. You know, uh, if they can hear an air jab, they'd be like, "Nah, I'm not going to go there." Uh, yeah. So, yep, that's basically window play in depth. So next, I'm going to show you what a runout uh, looks like. Uh, assuming that uh, Bomb location I'm just covering secure. the basics here. So um, let's say I have a cam. Let's say they forgot to destroy the outside cam, uh, and then I'm waiting for like info. So as you can hear the footsteps. What is the okay? That's the long way around, but okay. <laughs> So yeah, uh, since I have the info that someone is uh, rappelling and attacking, run out. Has located a bomb. You will be Usually that should be a, that should be a not non eliminate. So yeah, uh, if it, it's really strong, especially if you have Valcam. Um, basically, I've covered uh, what the spawn peak looks like and what the run out looks like um, as a defender because. Uh, I didn't go deeper into it uh, in it's not only done in this map it's done on almost every map well yeah every map uh, I guess except tower because there's no outside and there's no inside I mean it's only inside but yeah so let's talk about spawn peak so spawn peak is like this uh, when someone spawns and then you basically kill them as they run out of the common spot so yeah, uh, here I'm going to show you, uh, that's one of the most common spawn peaks in Consulate. I'll show you one, another one after this attack phase. Secure the bomb. So let's talk about spawn peaks. Like I showed you earlier, uh, the spawn peak in gas station insertion. is over here, uh, where you hold like here. Five seconds to insertion. The other spawn peak in gas station is over here. Op 4 has yet to locate a bomb. Where you can see someone going through. Oh, it's the one tap. It's the one tap. I am garbage. Uh, four eliminated. Anyway, Successful. so yeah, that's the that's the spawn peak. So, uh, one way to be creative in, uh, like, secure the bomb in defense is if you make like, uh, four has like meat holes the in Plan spawn peak. So one spawn seconds. peak I like doing is like something like Down this. Down five seconds. And then I go prone, so I basically get the view of uh, here. So basically, oh, it's not not far enough. So again, if I had more time, I would have spawned people. So yeah, so if he was in the police car, for example, there. I don't know why I can't Friendly take my headshots now. Hostiles eliminated. So yeah, so that's one like spawn peak place. Uh, I'm just showing you basically how you do a spawn peak. It's either behind the wall, behind the melee peak, or whatever. Counter spawn peak. All right. Uh, if you remember the window bomb. that I told you to go. So for example, if for example seconds. I know that uh, if I Five know like ago. someone is going to be. Holding that angle, can you go to the CEO window again? You must locate and defuse like the for bomb. example, bomb I have a hidden located. cam, and then I have an idea where he, uh, where they are. So I'm just going to pre-fire that spot Op and you know, uh, basically counter the spawn peak. There's also a counter for every runout, like you saw earlier, the nomad, uh, and then there's also a counter spawn peak. But again, it's going to de depend on your percentage. For example, that was a 90-10. Because Vigil could barely see me even with an ACOG and I'm just using Ash with the Reflex. You can barely see me, but I know the pre-fire spot. Um, basically, don't contest. Um, you, you're not supposed to contest spawn peaks, especially when you're the hard breacher, when you're Thatcher or something like that. Because it's just a waste of uh, op. You know, if you, lo if you lose the gunfight, 
well you're basically yeah you wasted an op uh, an important op for that matter so i don't try to like contest a spawn peak unless i'm at a advantage but if i'm at a disadvantage like those in yellow stairs i i can't because it could be anywhere it could be holding lower left or upper right you know by the stair of yellow window it's yeah so try not to contest as much uh, for those spawn peaks and those runouts and those runouts it's better to be prepared than to counter peak it uh, again um, an important tip for that is never be head height all right let's talk about map knowledge next so we're in the map called consulate consulate is one of the uh like most basic maps because it has the thing that are more common in like uh almost every map you can like integrate other things in map so as you can see in the lower right hand of my uh, compass, uh, you see exit front alley. So, alright. So now that it's first floor lobby. Okay, we're gonna talk about the basic callouts. Yes, this is lobby. But it, your callouts is gonna depend in your specifi uh, specificity. Sorry. So, okay, we're in lobby right now. So what if I say behind center desk? So it is behind center desk. Um... So, prone by United Nations flag or blue flag here. Or by French flag over here on the right. Or bathroom side peak. This is bathroom. Bathroom side peak is either here or deep. Deep would be here. So, yeah. So, this... I, I know it says antechamber, but my call out. This is bathroom hall. Or connector to piano. But usually it's bathroom hall because bathroom... Hall. So, if someone's here, then then bathroom hatch. Here, toilets. Here, urinals. And here, uh, faucets or sinks. Sorry. So yeah, your your callouts is gonna depend. Uh, so I'm just going to make this rotate, and this rotate. So the setup would be like, or this would be reinforced. Well, and just you know. So, for example, here in, um, I call this piano room, even though it's a press room. So again, behind long desk or long table, behind the uh, podium, or by piano, so by piano wall side, or by piano uh, west side, and then by piano north side. You get the idea. So, why is that important? Because there's a spawn peak on the spawn over there. Or, sorry, right here here so if someone were to pass by like here right there there's a pixel peak over here you can get them uh so this is yellow stairs why is it yellow stairs here so this is uh this is exit or like uh middle yellow or exit yellow this is bottom yellow and this is by handrail yellow this is pipes black sedan Blue tarp, white van, uh, behind uh, rotate box. Can you put the C4 here, please? Nitro it. I have barbed wires. Oh, yeah, barbed wires. Anyway, there's usually a rotate here. And that's why I call this rotate box, because you know, they usually shoot the guy over here. Um, so this is cafeteria. And then behind uh, here, sorry, ran out. This is security room. Uh, this is bottom spiral. This is bottom spiral. Uh, no one ever goes here in storage. This one's is generator or electric. This one's server. This one's archives. This is server. Here. This part is server. Uh, this is what I call uh, archives hall. And this is visa stairs. You know, again, the specificity is going to be different. So cafeteria down table or cafeteria uh, table you know uh, by soda machine by fridge like here by fridge or by rotate fridge or by rotate hole yeah but it's up to your team so again this is visa stairs I call it visa stairs because this is visa and this is tellers and this is visa lobby you know, uh, again, spiral, bot uh, this is like middle spiral, or first floor spiral, and this is top spiral. 
rotate here. This is long desk. There's usually a rotate here. So by rotate hole and long desk is here. Uh, by bathroom second floor window, usually someone repels here. Bomb has been located. Uh, this is top yellow, top yellow stairs, skylight. Uh, yellow skylight, sorry. And this small nook here is a cabinet. Uh, this is like a CEO down sofa. This is default plant, uh, left and right CEO window. Uh, yeah, I call this CEO even though it's console office. This is a connector for me. You have this is meeting. Again, so yeah. Uh, visa stairs. Uh, uh, what I like to call this is reception of uh, admin office. So this is admin office. And then there's going to be a photocopier here. That's why it's called uh, copy room. And this is break room. Don't be confused with cafeteria from downstairs. I call this soda machine of long hall or water fountain. Uh, this is a uh, hallway of spiral and long desk and this is by front desk. Again, not to be confused with reception. So your callouts will depend on on basically how you guys work as a team. So yeah, that's basically the callout, the, the very very digested callout. So yeah, uh, the callout for this, I call this benches and I call this... Um, uh, I know it says West Corridor, but I just call this a uh, long haul of mid yellow. I've got your back. All right, let's talk about utilities real quick. So I'm Zofia. That's Ash. Ash has um, stun grenades and a breach charge. Oh, sorry, not breach charge. A breaching round. And I'm Zofia, which also has two impacts. So here in Outback, there's usually a spawn peak here, and there's usually a run out here. So how do I want to like tackle this? want to put use my utility which is a claymore to counter that run out and uh, before I break this uh, I'll just show you how so throw a stun throw both left and right as you see there's an effect that the character made. so while they're blind you can actually enter and that's how basically you use your stuns you can also use uh, stun grenades uh, aside from entering is you use it to like cover the planting sound. So if for example, I'm planting, I ask someone like, hey, make some noise. Here he throws, he spams his flash and they won't hear the typing sound. So next, um, if I have breaching charges or in this case, breaching round, um, can you please shoot there? Area. So I can basically make angles. Uh, this is what I, uh, what I use for here, I'll show you an example. You see it impacted? So that means someone's there. And then there's a hook there. Alright. So yeah. Um, that's one way to use your utilities. Next, again, is creating angles. So you see that that one's reinforced and those are soft walls. Oh shoot. That was uh, impact. So now I made an angle. Uh, Ash, so there, I've created angles. So that's one way of using your utilities is either you use it to enter, like soft breaching, or you use it to make angles. Again, using your utilities, uh, for example, here. Whoops, apparently that's not a flash. But well, anyway, uh, Basically, that's how you use your utility. So stun when you enter, stun when you're planting, um, make holes. Uh, later, we'll show you how to vertical. Basically, the same thing. You see now my claymore hit someone because someone was trying to uh, enter the building. Uh, so yeah. Um, basically, later we'll cover vertical using the same ops with an addition of buck and sledge. But this covers the utility part. Uh, one utility I didn't mention is uh, for attack. Uh, by the way, uh, is smokes. I'll cover that in planting uh, more in depth. So yeah, uh, that's uh, that's breaching round. Uh, you can consider breaching charge or yeah, like wall breaches for this. Basically, you get the idea. Uh, claymores. You can either use it to like when you're plant. Put the claimer here. 
so while they're looking for the last guy that's alive, they go closer to the bomb, uh, I mean the fuser, and then they get killed. Alright, there's something I didn't cover about claymores in the utility part. Sometimes, it's smart, because um, it might get destroyed where, like for example, I'm vigil and I throw an impact, it's gonna get destroyed too. So where do I smartly place my claymores? So instead, like for example, here is a common runout spot, for example here. And they usually throw an impact or a nitro cell to destroy whatever is around it, whether if it's a nomad air jab or whatever. So I usually put it here. They won't expect it here and won't. And the first thing they'll do is they're gonna aim and they're, they're zoomed in, they won't see the claymore there. Uh, that's uh, one way I use claymores. Uh, so they won't. E they, they can barely see that also. Also, I can put it way, way back. If I can just pick it up. Okay. So if I can put it there. So just the laser, the tip of the laser would just like here. We're gonna get either down, depends on the rook plates or yeah, or instantly killed. I wouldn't put it here because if they run out, throw an, like they can see the laser, they'll just throw an impact, sprint, shoot, 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 and then we'll be dead. If I put it here, they won't be expecting it. And if they are, uh, it'll take time for them to shoot and then to uh, peek us. But you know, they'll be detected by the time. Uh, smart players would do a wide swing far away from that because I myself expect that already. Uh, yeah, so that's one way to use claymores. Alright, so I'm Buck and that's that Sledge. Uh, one of the two best vertical ops in my opinion or in my experience because I always use them. So here in Border, uh, this is a vertical rich map. So Sledge, would you follow me? me. So, alright. So one of the strats usually to attack um, Armory and Archives is through West Balcony. So West Balcony has those two walls and also CCTV. Uh, Alright, so if we're going to Workshop... So if we're going to Workshop... Uh, the usual, this is um, half wall of... Uh, Half wall of lockers, or er, here I'll show you. That's half wall. Why is it called half wall? It's because of that wall. So there's the lockers. Uh, this is an armory, by the way. So someone will usually camp there, and I'll show you a way to counter it. Uh, so yeah. So having said that, this would be where the where the vertical is for bandits. So yeah, this is like the best way to use. Either Buck, Ash, Sophia, or anyone with like a frag grenade, you can cook it, throw it on the right time, and destroy the bandits uh, that will be here, or the Kades that will be usually up here. Uh, so as we see here, uh, this is also a site. This is uh, vents, and this is server. And here in workshop, it's also. But I'll show you that. Um, I'll make a rotate here because that's usually a setup. So Sledge, come here. So here, uh, can you please destroy this one? And can you please destroy this one? I hear footsteps. So here, you can see the table where usually someone's camping here. And here you can see the rotate where someone could be camping here. Um, yes, there's sometimes a shield there. Uh, but yeah. Um, Sledge, could you come here and destroy this? Here usually someone would be camping over here on the right. But going to uh, archives, uh, Sledge, could you destroy this? And could you destroy this beside the hatch? Assuming that this is real. Destroy this. So here, someone usually camp. I personally uh, tries to hold it over here. Here's a here's a. I'll give you a tip about uh, holding side. I would I would re I'll repeat this in defense. It's when. Oh, there's four guys. 
you always try to be not head high. So you either be really high or really really low. I'll give you a tip where really low is. So here, really low. They won't expect you peaky. And you'll be too high for head height. So here is my magic spot. You can get people that are uh, pushing here. Uh, if that's destroyed over there. You can actually see through the window. Actually it's this one, but you get the idea. So yeah, that's a tip. So vertical. Uh, vertical play, as you can see how Sledge and I um, made holes that will put pressure on the uh, enemy team. Friendly it's like success. these kinds of holes. Terrorist. So I, cool, no matter what happens. I showed you how to Moving use out. Buck and Sledge. Uh, let me show you now how to use a uh, non, like, non-utility... Or sorry, no like non-special ability op, uh, like uh, Blackbeard. So, as you can see, I'm not, I'm not a hard, I'm not a soft breacher. I don't have those things, but I do have a breaching charge. So, like IQ has a breaching charge, I believe. Uh, so, where do I use? It? Also, fun fact: DMRs can destroy on. So, usually I go to. I usually go to. Uh, initiate. Ah, sorry, Vault. Where I would. I would contest. Vertically. Like, for example, here. Okay, we're in Vault. Or Office. I called it Vault because of that. So I, this is under throne, or above throne, I'm sorry. So this is where I will, you know, there's usually someone holding there, covering dragon door. So I would usually uh, contest that. Uh, again, someone will be holding the pillar that will hold dragon door. Here's, um, here's how you contest that. He would usually be standing here, holding that. Uh, this should be like destroyed. Uh, so they can see uh, dragon, whoever's entering Dragon Door. Uh, what else? Uh, here's a good strat. If you've like planted here, you can have someone play vertical either here or or like leave a drone there. You know, you leave a drone. Uh, for example, it's a one v one situation. It's post plant. Uh, you, your teammates are on the drone. Uh, you can leave a cam, hide it, and then, like for example, here. Uh, let's pretend. Let's, I'll, and then I'll plant here. And then you can see. Uh, sorry, it's over here. So basically, you get the idea. It's post plant, and then uh, you're waiting for your friends to tell you, hey, someone's diffusing, someone's diffusing. And you just shoot down uh, there. So yeah, you can see the bullets over there. That's a bullet. Uh, yeah, so that's one way of using uh, like a uh, vertical to de defend the bomb post plant or def uh, defend the diffuser post plant. You can also do it the other way around. So if, let's say if the site is over here, I plant it here. I'll go from the bottom. Let's leave the drone there. For example, it's a one v one situation. Uh, I hit my cam, say here, and then. You know, uh, so here, I, I, I planted here, and then someone's defusing, I can just shoot vertically where he's defusing, you know, ping him and stuff. So yeah, so that's basically how uh, I use, like for example, a hard, uh, non-breacher with a breach charge, how to breach. So yeah. Um, that's basically how vertical play is uh, using uh, sledge, buck, or breach charges. But it's not limited to that. It's not limited to Ash, it's not limited to Sophia if they have impacts. You can do it on defense also. So if you have someone that you know it's planting, you can just throw an impact here or throw a nitro cell here, and then you can shoot the planter. 
You know, you have to be creative in this game. So yeah. Uh, basically, that's it for uh, vertical play. I guess, I guess uh, that's the basics. I'm, all, I'm only covering the basics of basics. So yeah, that's for uh, non uh, non special ability breach or like, uh, this thing. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it. So let's talk about planting next. So this is Echo. Echo has the Echo drone. So Echo, can you bring out your other drone? Do you have any more? Let's bring out your other one. So pretend I'm planting and then there's an echo drone above me and then shoot me. You look up right away because it loses it, it decloaks when it shoots. So when you, when you keep getting echoed, try to look for it. Uh, but it's going to be difficult if it's like a three second plant situation where you have to shoot it and then plant. And then you, there's another one that you have to deal with. It's gonna be hard. So make sure you have like an IQ or make sure uh, if you have the info that there's an echo around, make sure you look up in plant areas. So uh, one way to counter it is um, smoking. It can't see through smoke. So and it can only uh, shoot you through a, you know, it's not an area of effect. It has to hit, hit you directly. As you can see, uh, it was a harder time for it to hit me. Uh, one counter to that smoke is a maestro and a warden uh, Yeah, so as you see here it took seven seconds to plant and as you can see in the top middle You can see the counter again. So it's 40 seconds. There's four quadrants of a circle so That's 10 seconds each quadrant. So now it's at 20 seconds. Can you please get ready to diffuse? I'll tell you when I'll tell you when so, 10 now, now, it takes four zaps to diffuse. And you see, that was right on the money. Mission is a failure. That was, it, it needs to be like there's like I'm, I I believe it's four ticks of the clock where it starts to be like uh, it takes seven seconds to diffuse, seven seconds to plant, and you need four quadrants. Uh, four, one quadrant is 10 seconds, so if you see like 4 ticks, not one, one tick is not necessarily 1 second, but you can get the feel of it. If you don't diffuse by 7 seconds, uh, you will basically lose. So yeah, that's basically diffusing and planting. Diffuse a bomb. So next I'm going to show you how I use a shield off uh, as a diffuser carrier. So... Uh, so when you use Montane, you put your shield at your back, making you uh, essentially put it through. So we combine that with uh, while planting. So so okay. You have located a bomb. Uh, Doc, please shoot my shield. Okay, stop. Now shoot it while it's in my back. So I'm going to plant here. I want you to try and. Uh, like, spray the smoke when you hear the planting sound. Shoot. As you can see, I'm protected from bullets. So that's one other method for um, trying to, you know, uh, plant is to go at the back. One place I appreciate this is in van at server. And you see, this, this doc's now gonna have a hard time dealing with this mountain if it's a 1v1 situation because he has me what, I'll just wait there see? and then again use the tick of the clock tick of the clock uh, I'll tell you when it's over ok now it's over he missed it he missed the magic like spot of the time yeah, so again, four quadrants, and then by like, let's say, if you don't do it in between 9 and 10 o'clock, you already lost. By 10 o'clock, it's already six seconds. And defuse a bomb. So I talked about how to counter a, how to counter a smoke 
plan, right? Like using an or how to counter a plant uh, in general. It's using an echo drone, eating a C4, or killing the planter basically. So, uh, how do you counter a smoke plant or a, a mountain plant, for example? You have located a uh, bomb. So, I'm not mountain right now. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd basically, um, for example, uh, so I'll smoke and then I'll eat my candelas and then all all that smoke has to do is throw your smoke, throw your smoke and then deploy it. How did you miss? Yeah, so basically that's how you counter a smoke plant. It's basically throwing a smoke, so once again. Bomb has been located. So throw it please. So yeah. Basically All that's how you count the smoke plant. Also maestro cams, they can see through smoke. Uh, that's effective against mountain plants, you know, and C4s. Uh, sometimes mountain can live through it, sometimes can't, you know. But yeah, aside from impacts and C4s, those are the counters for planting in smoke. It's uh, maestro cam, uh, smoke smokes, and even Goyo's fire if it's closer. So let's talk about attacking. Uh, at the beginning of the round, there's going to be a droning phase. Uh, you'll see minus 15 seconds, but usually it's like 40 seconds or whatever. Um, and then uh, after I drone, uh, I'll show you the default cam spots. There's going to be default cams that will tell you a lot of information. So first, let's begin with the um, drone phase. All right. We so here, drone phase, or the prep phase for the defense. Uh, you see there's a default cam right there. So in the drone phase, the number one thing you have to do is find the objective. So here in Clubhouse, it's going to be um, a CCTV and a cache. We located a bomb. And cache, all right. Next is find the op. So now this is Bandit, the counter hard breacher. So I asked Band Bandit to like only like uh, Bandit one wall, so I can show you the effects. So one of the effects of Bandit is it can destroy my drone. Okay, so that's basically drone phase again. Find the bomb, find the ops. Why? So if there's a trap op, for example, Frost, uh, you know that they ha she has like three frost traps. So everyone will be like, care frost, and then every time you go in, you uh, like you jump in a window, you look down to pre-fire it, to destroy it, and then you're like, oh, I destroyed one, and then some guy, I destroyed two, so that's all three, now you have to take your mind. Like, hey, there's no more frost traps, I can stop looking down every time I enter a window now. Now next is like, the, the default camps. So default camps are really important to the defense. So in attack, the first thing you have to do is destroy default camps. Why? Because those are the info that they need for them to run out or for them to expect where you're going to attack. So as you see there, I spawn at uh, the warehouse. So there's going to, there might be like spawn peaks or runouts that usually happens here. Uh, hold on. There. So yeah. So one of the spawn peaks would be uh, through the window under here. Here, there's usually a spawn peak here. I'll show you in a while. There's a spawn peak looking through here, so anyone that goes through there can be killed. Uh, there's a run out here, that's why there's always claymores here, here, and then here. Uh, yeah, so there's claymores usually here to prevent the run out. So, yeah. Uh, so that's why you have to destroy like uh, default camps. I'll show you one more default camps. They can be both inside and outside. So one of the default camps is over here. Later I'll show you the, their view. But yeah, that's the first thing you have to do. Five seconds and counting. This is how important Bomb default camps secure. are. So you see, I know where Maverick is spawning, and I know where he's going through. That's why it's important to destroy default camps at the beginning. So next, I told you, 
that bandit can destroy hard breach. You see, this is the unbanded wall. So hard breaching is basically destroying reinforced walls. So look, this is gonna get destroyed. You see, but here, uh, for the soft wall. Ah, uh, sorry, for the reinforced wall, it can get uh, breach. But uh, know that bandit can go uh, left and right with a bandit battery. That's what you call bandit picking. So uh, now we're going to look go the defense side exactly. to show you what bandit picking is. Secure so now bombs. I'm bandit. So uh, I'm using a shotgun, but I don't usually use a shotgun. But I make those holes so I can hear where the bandit batteries yeah, are. Five seconds. Ah, uh, sorry, bandit. thermite charges are, the exothermic charge. Uh, four has so I know where to place my bandit battery. So next, uh, here's the view of the... Uh, you see, now I can mark so I can tell you who it is. No, he destroyed it, but I know I can identify its thermite. So yeah, that's what's important about uh, default camps, you know? Alright, so now to bandit trick. That's that's one. That's two. So basically, um, I listen to where the planting is, and as you saw, I, a really good bandits don't have this bandified for that technique, because uh, you can. So if one gets thermite, uh, sorry, one gets thatchered, it's going to be destroyed. But if I have like more than two with me, or if I have two with me, I can play with one, and then the other one can be a sacrifice. So yeah, uh, later we'll see the difference. Uh, well, let's see the effects of a Thatcher. Alright, so yeah, now we're going to look insertion. at the effects of uh, Thatcher. Thatcher is uh, the most important um, support model. That's why in high rank lobbies, he's usually banned. Uh, why, what can Thatcher get to do with partnered with a hard breacher is he can destroy enemy electronics. So I'll tell you when to throw it. So please throw it now. You saw that. And it destroys everything behind the reinforced wall. So uh, let's say I'm bandit tricking and then I, I suck at it and I failed. Oh, can you throw another one, Thatcher? Thatcher has three of those, right? Right? Yes. Okay, Thatcher has three. And it disables uh, enemy electronics. So now. If they have a thermite, uh, it is now breachable. Uh, as you can see, even the laser got affected, that's why the reticle suddenly went smaller. So yeah, that's the effect of a Thatcher. Uh, later we'll see the effects of a Kali. Alright. So I'm Kali. Um, can you put two bandits and your nitro cell down? Kali is an alternative to Thatcher. So, please, uh, make it further, like put it on this uh, server thing. Uh, wait, 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 no, no, right, right here, right here. Bomb has been located. Alright. So, you saw the Thatcher earlier, the effects of a Thatcher. Basically, it's the same with the Kali. It has an area of effect that can destroy, uh, you know, the everything behind. So, this is a alternative to Thatcher, basically. So, yeah, so that's Kali. And defuse a bomb. So, now I'm... Maverick, another hard breacher. So first thing you have to do after drone phase, shoot the default cams, you know, so you don't get to be predictable and whatever. No get, don't get run out and don't get spawn peak. So now, as you can see here, oh no, let's say our Thatcher got run out and killed, uh, and it's bandified. What can I do? Thatcher is one of those good you ops, the like those the really, really one-man army ops that can do everything. Hard breach and be a, a, a defender on it on his own. So if you ask me, uh, oh hello, right there. Anyway, vertically, this is where the bandits are located. So there's two ways of going about this. I was wrong. 
um, you can either like pre-fire or shoot them. Like for example, if I have a drone there, I'll bring up a drone. I should have just thrown it up there. Well, here, I'll show you. Uh, let's pretend that I have time. And like everything was set up, you know? So let's pretend I have a drone here. I'm going to ping. And then I'm going to adjust. So the ping is slightly behind it, as you can see. So what can I do? So I, I know that I ping here. So I'm just gonna pre-fire. Nope, there, I destroyed it. Um, Bandit, can you put one more on the left? And now please uh, go away from there. But another thing, if I can do that, uh, the easier way, instead of just pre-firing like that, is cook a grenade. And then destroy it. So you see, both of them got destroyed by just one grenade. So I'm gonna show you how to Maverick Trick. Um, basically Maverick Breach. I don't know why it's called a trick, if it's meant for him to do that, but okay. So basically, what I like doing, aiming 45 degrees to the left. Uh, right click and then straight. Yep. We're gonna try to get both walls here. And now prone. You don't have to aim when you're prone, you can just do this really quick. Uh, a really quick uh, maverick could be able to, you know. So now, this is both. Um, not. Uh, these are now soft walls. As you can see, and now I can hold it. That's why Maverick is a one-man army. He can be both support and he can both uh, breach uh, by himself. So yeah, that's why for me Maverick's OP but underrated because not a lot of people use him. Plus he has a cock. <laughs> so next is Ivana. We're going to show her your extra Kairos palace. Ivana, fall back. I'll be Ivana in a sec. I just want to show you how it looks like. So. Uh, can you make three, you uh, know what to do. one, two, three? As you can see, you can see the laser where the x gyros are going to be. Okay, stop. That's enough. Um, activate them. So as you see, the shotgun hole I made is similar in size. So it takes two to make it um, crouch height. If or you remain in this zone, you will be detected by hostiles. Um, spotted. But essentially, it can still be standing height if done perfectly. You will be detected if you remain uh, in this one area. Your location has been compromised. One X um, like six of them, can make prone height. So, um, Ivana, can you go here, please? Can you please make a uh, perfect all six? Um. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's good. So that's all you need for a... That's all you need for a prone. Uh, for a prone. Oh my god. It glitched. Wait, I'll try it from the other side. Yep, it's bugged. Wait, there we go. You outbugged the bug. See, it rubber banded me. Ta-da! But essentially, you can fit me there. Oh, look! I did! I fit through there. So R6 is buggy right now. Or it's always been buggy. But yeah, basically one X Kairos can make a prone height. So two can make a voltable, uh, three can make standing, but two perfect can make um, a run running hold. So yeah. So for example if I just show here you have entered running. enemy control. If this area. was a bit spaced out, not curved like this. Spotted by hostiles. Fall back. So yeah, that's Ivana. I'm in basement. All right, so I'm Kate. I'm gonna show you uh, the two important things in Kate's uh... oh followers. Uh, so hello. So this is Ivana. All right, I am surprised I didn't get blind. So all right. So I'm Kate and Kate is for walls and hatches. Oh my god. So for
for example Wait, I'll only, I'll only, I'll only kid one of these hackers So I'll tell you when I'll tell you when I'll tell you when So yeah uh, Basically Kate is for like 3 walls mm, Let's find 3 walls Let's see 1, 2, no that's not 3 So basically here uh, This thing can go up to 3 walls one, two, three. So if you get like all the corners of it uh, It's going to get Electrified. So, um, Hibana, please shoot this one with the Skyros. So, Hibana is mainly for hatches. She doesn't do well uh, in walls unless it's exactly perfect. So, now Hibana, do this. What? Try to shoot it with your Skyros. So, now you can see that the, yeah, it's caded. Um, and that's how uh, Hibana can't, you know, breach. For example, they don't have a Thatcher, they don't have a Twitch to destroy it. Uh, Hibana can no longer, you know, uh, breach that. Uh, yeah, so remember Ace, you need two to destroy hatches. So Ace is more for walls. Hibana uh, only needs one, but Hibana needs like more than one for walls. Uh, those hard breachers have their pros and cons. So yeah. Uh, thermite one for both. So thermite is still like the main thermite. You know, sorry, main hard breacher. Uh, Hibana and Ace have their pros and cons. Uh, where the bottom line is thermite. So yeah, so that's how Kade works. Usually I use him for like hatches or for for like walls that you can like hit more than two or three. The maximum like this can hit us like three. I guess like this is for example two, one there, one there. Yeah, so that's basically key. So I'm Ace, I'm Ace, I'm uh, basically showing uh, what Ace hard breaches look like. So uh, how you wanna throw it is going to be in between these three for your maximum height level. So yeah. Did I say 3 I meant So now it's perfect running time. Uh, so there was like 4 crosses there so you have to throw it in between. Uh, next is a hatch. Which hatch did you reinforce? This one. So as you can see Ace needs 2 to destroy 1 hatch. He can't destroy it with just 1 uh, Selma charge. So we rather use Hibana for hatches and Ace for walls. So yeah, that's basically Ace. So next I'll show you how to gear a trick. So we have Thermite in the other side. So he's gonna place his uh, exothermic charge. And then you're going to put your mirror wall. And there, it destroys it. So that's the mirror trick. So, can you try to place... Oh wait. Oh, there's no more space. I should have placed one standing, one crouch. But essentially, that's how you destroy... Uh, a exothermic charge. So, one counter hard feature that can also be destroyed by... Kali and uh, bomb locations are secure. Kali and Thatcher, and even the Maverick trick I showed you, not uh, is uh, mute. So we have thermite over here. So thermite, if you remain in this zone, you will be It doesn't destroy it. Your location has been compromised. But so try to activate it. Okay, you see it's being jammed. Later we'll show that effect. Oh yeah, there's no friendly fire. Can you destroy it, please? Now activate it. So, as you can see, um, Mute can like 
disable those devices. We'll see the effects of that later. Can you please try to drone? It's dead. Yes? Yeah, it's dead. So it can disable the drone as long as you destroy it. It's gonna be reactivated. We'll try using it again. Yeah, so if I'm like putting it here and then a drone suddenly goes close, it's dead. Okay. Uh, yeah. So basically that's mute. It can disable electronic devices and hard breacher. It's affected by Thatcher's, explosions, bullets, and whatsoever. So now we're going to see the effects of a mute jammer on both drones and um, breaching stuff. You located a bomb. So here's mute. So let's say, oh, uh, I can hear the jamming sound. Uh, can you please go in? So it's going to tell me exothermic charges jam. Uh, it also works in X-Kairos and breaching charges and also in drones. So that drone is basically dead. I can't, I can't uh, use it anymore, you know. So yeah. Uh, yep, that's basically the effects of a mute. So if I destroy the mute, it's gonna reactivate. So can you please put uh, one mute down? Uh, just anywhere, just put it anywhere. Put it outside here. So, it got jammed, right? All I have to do is destroy the jammer, and then it's back working again. Yep, so that's basically the effects of a mute. So, aside from bandit tricking, cade tricking, uh, there's also impact in C4 tricking. For a hard breach, or against hard breach. So, as vigil, I have impact. This shows you how to use utility. So that's broken. So thermite, please. So that effectively destroys, um, like exothermic charges or selmas. But it depends on the height. Usually, if it's lower, uh, can you can you try crouching? And then planting. Maybe a C4 can get it because it has a bigger uh, blast radius. Uh, that's that can still be reached. So effectively, I guess uh, Selma that's lower or a X Kairos that's low. You can only get like a few of them, but can effectively make a like a prone uh, angle. So yeah, that's impact tricking. C4 tricking can work. So we have like. Um, Cade tricking, we have bandit tricking, uh, and then we have impact in C4. So you can also do that in hatches. Uh, yeah, so it's your job to find out how to do it on hatches, but that's basically the basics of how to counter hard reaches. So I'm a roamer, Vigil is a roamer. So what are my jobs? My job is to roam around the map and catch, um, catch attackers off guard. So how do I roam? Basically, at the start of the round, I would like check which cameras has been destroyed. Like, for example, this camera. If this camera is destroyed, this tells me they spawned back alley. If this camera is destroyed, this tells me they um, they spawned parking lot uh, side. If this camera is destroyed, the, this tells me they spawned jewelry store. You know, or effectively, they can also be in parking lot. But the entrance is also it's only here. So Vigil's special ability is to not be detected by uh, not be detected by a drone. So as you see there, I got a cue that they detected the bomb. I'm gonna assume that's the person and uh, try to backstab it. So as a roamer, I try to be uh, coming from like their backs. So yeah, basically that's how roaming is. You roam around the map, find out where they're spawning, where they're coming from, and then try to get from their like from where they are, and try to catch them off guard. If there's multiple of them, good. You know that's how you roam, basically. Basically. So next we're going to look at the counterpart of knock, which is vigil. 
So Vigil, where are you at? You have located so here, bomb. show your abil ability, Vigil. As you can see, he disappears from the map. Uh, do you have impacts? Uh, do you remember the trick you did? Okay, do it. Where are you? No, 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 you don't need to reinforce. The other trick. The one on top of the thingy. Bro, where are you? Over here, behind you, the wall thing. All right. So this is Vigil, right? So Vigil disappears, and as you can notice, there's interference in my cam. And during that interference, uh, that interference can only be detected on the same level of where you are. So, for example, there. So, activate it, please. So, as you see, there's no interference. Not even when I try to jump. But as soon as I get to the same level of where Vigil is, that's where it starts getting effect. That goes the same for Knock. Uh, we won't show Knock anymore, since it's basically the same, but in the attacker side. So, basically, uh, Knock is a counter roamer or a lurker, and... It counters a vigil, which is a roamer, so it counters a counter, counters a roamer. So yeah, so please disappear again. You see, there's interference, and once I go below him, there's no more interference. See, no more interference. So that's basically another way that you can just, um, you can find knock. I uh, sorry, uh, vigil is if you have an IQ. So please activate your thingy. There. You can you can see where Vigil is uh, deactivated and then reactivated. So yeah, you can see Vigil through IQ's ability. So if I were to find like this Roamer, for example, uh, please activate. So it's his backpack that, that lights up. So yeah, Top that's how I counter Vigil. So I'm Cav. Cav is the counter to the counter of uh, Jackal. Because Jackal is a counter roamer, but I'm the roamer that can counter Jackal. Uh, wait, let's talk about... Uh, let's talk about uh, utilities first. So Jackal, can you try to enter? Walk. Where are you? Where are you entering from? Oh. So what I have here is a proximity... Uh, proximity alarm and you'll see the radius of the proximity alarm uh, if I can find Jackal where are you? Op 4 found a bomb, you must defend it Hey Jackal, where are you? I'm at the bomb Okay, here, here, here So that's a proximity alarm That's going to alarm So as a roamer, what would I like to do is I'd put that behind me and if someone crosses it I'd know that they're there so now, uh, Jackal, Jackal, can you scan me? So, as I said, Jackal is a counter Someone roamer. Is tracking you He'll down. track me by revealing my position. And you can see beside my health, the left side, that's Jackal. But if I use my silent step, it turns off. So basically, I can trick Jackal, you know, like pretend like I put my footstep here, for example. You and then I'll identified. double back uh, to like uh, somewhere else, you know. So basically, yeah. So that's how you can counter Jackal. Uh, yeah, so that's a roamer. And roamers do All friendlies have been neutralized. go around in maps. Uh, and if Jackal's tracking you, you can counter it with Cav's silent step. Bombs. So I'm Mozzie. Mozzie is one of those info ops that can be seconds. roamers. So how do I use Mozzie? Is I down to five seconds. I put my traps in like drone holes, you know, you must protect your bomb or near doors, or board. when where usually drones would, um, you know, jump. So uh, let's find the drone. 
Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. So where's your drone? It's right here. Active shock drone, nice. So now that I have a drone, uh, I could either do uh, two things with it. Either one for info or one as a uh, pre-placed cam. For example, I want a cam, like a Valk cam watching over stock. So I'm going to place it here. Uh, what it, it looks like it's going to be their teammate, so they're not going to uh, destroy it. But the thing about uh, the thing about these camps, it, it's blue. Uh, can you put another camp, please? A drone, sorry. As you can see here, it's yellow. But when I use mine, oh, I can't see it. Uh, it's blue. So this is yellow, as you can see here. And I can still activate mine. Um, yeah, so mine is blue. Later, we'll see it on the other side. So yeah, that's basically Mozzie. Mozzie's a roamer. I would use this uh, number one as a pre-place, and if I have more than like, if I have two, two pre-place and one uh, roaming with me, so I would like to join it out for me, and then I would, like take it, you know. But there's a bug where drones become blue because even though there's no Mozzie. So here we're just going to show you what a Mozzie drone looks like. So please show me your mozzy drone. As you can see, it's blue now instead of yellow like we saw earlier. So that's one way to tell um, if a drone has been captured. But sometimes it glitch because this game is buggy as hell. Sometimes it's yellow even though it's a mozzy drone. Or sometimes it's blue even though there's no mozzy. So yeah, that's basically mozzy. So I'm mute. Uh, as we saw, it can uh, jam enemy... Uh, like heart breaches and it can jam uh, drones so Doka B, I'm on my cam, please call so this is what Doka B's uh, would look like and this is the normal way to turn it off a bomb has been located by right. R4 so now I'll show you the counter for it, can you call again? hello just stand in front of the, the where the jammer is and then it gets uh, it gets unjammed or it gets jammed so yeah that's basically mute so now I'm going to show you um, how to put pre place traps um, yes there's a trap ops and yes I am bad I am a roamer uh, but basically I use her as a trap ops. so how do I use her as a trap so I already know the placement of the C4 but here I'll ping it and then I'll look at that my cam it's there so for example if someone breaches through can you breach through the right window of yeah. terrace and then it exploded uh, we're on 200 HP that's why it didn't die what's your HP right now? 47 47 yeah so basically that's how I use um, you're exposed you have entered Valk enemy as a area. trap off. Leave now. All right. So basically, uh, you pre-place C4s. So you can also do that, like in Outback, in Bowl, for example, or you know, uh, those are the things where you know, uh, trapping is viable. So again, I put a cam someone there, and then when someone down. jumps off the window, I just detonate my C4 and there. Those are pre-placed traps. So not like Capcan, not like Frost, not like Legion. Where this is more like a if you get lucky, if like three of them are reaching at the same time, you remain in this area. Also, yes, you have time to counter Claymore. I forgot to show you guys that earlier. So, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna show you Cavs cam placement, but I'm, I'm showing you that you can put pre place traps. Uh, you are being followed in you know certain maps in certain areas. Area, keep the bombs so, protected. we've covered utilities. Uh, for attackers. Ten seconds remaining. And we covered barbed wire in the last video. So I'm gonna use my banshee as an example encounter. for barbed wire because I accidentally selected Malusi. But basically, uh, yet to locate a bomb. basically, it works the same. So you put them in places where you want to choke them. You know, so for example, rotate holes. For example, like it prevents them from entering. Uh, later I'll show you what barbed wire using Oryx looks like. So where are you, Jackal? Uh, 
I'm at main entrance. Okay, go up spiral. So, for example, here it's gonna slow him down, uh, and it's going to make a sound cue for the Melusi. So I know it's going to be here. So try going to through banana, and then to connector. Op uh, four has located a bomb. You know what to do. So, uh, especially here, it's a choke point. So it's easy to kill them in these certain situations. Uh, it will work in okay, similar to barbed wire. The sound that it's making is uh, similar to uh, how a barbed wire makes sounds. Uh, again, uh, can you not move? So again, I can use that as a trap option. So for example, if uh, like for example if. Well, we're on Somebody double double you. HP, and I hear the sound cue. Uh, I can Op use it as a trap, uh, as a cue to, you know, like, again, a roamer as a trap op, just like Valk earlier with Valk cams. So that uh, this time instead of vision, I'm using sound cues. So I talked about um, putting pre-placed traps. Now I'll show you how to counter them. So I'm IQ. IQ can. Uh, find like em enemy electronic devices at 20 meters so we're going to text it here the default cams so that's a default cam over there and it also locates um, like traps and uh, the bomb site itself so here you find the, the bomb okay and then I can see pre-placed traps so here's a... Uh... Wait, where is this? Oh, that's behind the thing. So yeah. So as you see, I can see the goo mines. Uh... Wait, let's find one here. So I can destroy them from vertical. Legion, can you turn on your camera, please? Are you looking through your phone? Are you? So I can see his phone right there. That's his phone. Oh, I killed him. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically how you use IQ. You can see them while looking through the phone, uh, especially when Doka B calls. Uh, you can destroy pre-placed traps using IQ, also from top to bottom. But you know why risk it? So just go look for it in the bottom. Alright, so let's talk about Nomad. Nomad uh, in a post plant situation or a counter run out. We already did, 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 did the counter run out and the counter, you know. Uh, now we're going to see like in post plants. Wow. So, Mozzie, can you go off site, please? Yeah, well, stay, there, okay. stay there, stay there, stay there. Don't move. So, I'm going to put like here, I'm going to put like here, and then I'm going to put like here, and then I'm going to plant um, where I can see it through vertical. So, so let's say I'm, for example, I'm repelling, but uh, yeah, so please try to enter site. So as you see, those nomads are gonna buy time. Can you hit that one also? There you go. Okay, come here. Also, it's important to note that nomad affects uh, also attackers. So it also affects attackers. So now go defuse. So what I like doing is sometimes I would like to put one. Uh, I would like to put one there. Another way to use uh, pre-placed C4 is, for example, uh, hey, can you plant? Uh, wait, wait. I'll tell you when to plant. Can you plant right about here? I'll tell you when. I'll tell you when. I'll tell you when. Don't plant yet. So, another way to use C4 is to counter a plant. Uh, oh wait, I forgot we're in 200 HP, so I have to damage you a bit. So below me is going to be. Oops. Tell you when. Okay. 
Uh, please plant now. So you can use um, your C4 as a counter plant. Uh, basically, just showing you the possibilities how to use pre play C4s and all that stuff. So let's talk about uh, setups. Um, I'm gonna protect the hostage, but uh, let's pretend that it's a let's pretend it's a uh, bomb site, you know. So a common reinforce the area. A common setup would be like uh, you reinforce this. You open up this. Uh, you know what? I'll just do this to make things faster. So this is the usual bandit uh, wall, uh, bandit trick wall. Uh, I'm just going to show you what you, ha what you have to look for in certain maps. Uh, it depends on, of course, it depends on the map and the setup. So, for example, this and this one should always be reinforced. This one should always be a road day, you know, and then there's either a shield here, uh, there's someone supposed to hold catwalk, someone's supposed to be holding a rod, sorry, a rod. So yeah, so basically these are, uh, basically these are the common, common setups you need all the time is number one. Uh, reinforce, always reinforce. Number two, rotate holes. Number three, beat holes. So, uh, and then there's a technique where you deny, you deny like certain areas. For example, I made that. Uh, Maybe there is a way. So okay. Uh, this is a rotate. Uh, this is a peak angle, right? This is another rotate, and this is a reinforce. Uh, aside from utilities, for example, since I'm always anyway, I'll have this, you know, to tell me where they're coming from. I'll have this, you know, just be smart about it. But usual setups again: reinforce, rotate holes, and then uh, whatever the traps state. you Hostiles have, whatever utilities you have. And then uh, here's a special technique. But usually you do this in bedroom when you're holding bedroom and gym. You usually do this here. So when someone is in there, you can like, you can, you know. Yeah. So. Just the basic setups, uh, and obviously you have your rolls, you have your barricades. Your rolls, uh, me, like for example, I could be an anchor. So for example, I'm anchoring site or I'm anchoring catwalk, holding catwalk, or someone should be holding red. You know, go uh, about it again, but this time, this time I'll be someone else. Uh, So I'll show you what it looks like in bedroom. But then again, uh, my main point is there should always be like a setup in every map. Like there should be Valcam spots. There should be um, there should be like uh, barbed wire spots or whatever. Uh, I'll show you here. So obviously, how do you use barbed wires? Is you make sure that it's like a choke angle or like it's a place where they'll get stuck on and then the way you set up is like yeah like always reinforce the necessary walls you know always have the necessary uh, rotates like for example uh, usually this one this one this one or sometimes this could be a rotate and then someone would be holding here uh, this one, this one, you reinforce. Uh, and then this one would have a mirror. This one would be reinforced. This is always reinforced, but most of the time they'll always get it. So, so, 
So again, setup is important. The way you shape your sight is the way you'll shape your victory. So yeah. So I'm just listening to sound cues now. So that's barbed wire. So, that's so yeah, that's how you use barbed wire. And you can hear those rappel noises. You can also have uh, rotate here, but once they take map control of office, uh, basically this map is you know gone for. It. If you give them space to work with, that's basically uh, it. So in attacking, it's the opposite. You want to take map control. So if I were attacking, I want to take control of this one. Or I would like to take control of this one. The threat has been eliminated. So yeah. And then I would do window plays here hostage if I were attacking. Secure the hostage. I would like the enemy overwatch has this area covered over fall here. back. But um, the map controller would really want to get this control by enemy overwatch. Fall because back. Because if you have this in cash, you also have this window that you can work with. You know? This zone is covered by the enemy. So you Retreat. can freely go around the right side of the map of your side. Uh, yeah, so there's always going to be insertion. Prepare to engage. a roamer or depends on the after, you know. Yeah, so it depends on the ops. For example, if I'm Oryx, I should have this open so I can like roam and then I can go up. So if I go up, I just like here. Yeah, and then I would retake side, for example. So that's basically how you do a setup. You have your peak holes, you have your rotate holes, your reinforcements, your utilities, your abilities, you know, all that stuff. So yeah, so no, no the common strats, common setups for rank. And then it's, it's not gonna be that hard for you. So yeah, that's basically setups. I know this is like a bad map to show it, but I'm just showing you the basics. So that's why it's important to have um, vehicles like this. It's exactly for that. You know, and then listen to the sound cues where they're coming from. You know, the warp wires and everything. Yeah. So yeah, that's basically how you set up. Secure the area. It depends on sites, but basically that's what you have. Reinforcements, rotate holes, and then if necessary, peak holes, and then if uh, your whatever placement, your ADSs, your Valk camps, your Maestro camps, your shields, your barbed wires, your Malusis, all of those are, yeah. Your pre-placed traps, your traps, state. your cap camp traps, your frost, all those stuff. You have to know it um, before you start going around. So I suggest you play unranked first and get the feel of the common ranked strats. You know, especially mirror placement. Mirror placement here is strong, for example. Yeah, so know the strats, know the common setups.